Hello Quest, it's Jonathan. I'm here for your newsletter. I hope you're having a real great week and enjoying some fall weather. And this week for our newsletter, we just wanted to do a quick follow-up on some of what we talked about in our message series on 1 Corinthians called Messy Church. I just had a few thoughts kind of percolating in my mind that I was thinking, you know, this really, it, it expands beyond what we talked about this last week and into really the rest of the letter. And so we're going to jump back into Messy Church, put your Corinthian hat back on. And this last Sunday, we saw Paul really focusing in as he's dealing with this issues of factions and divisions in their church. He talks about the message of Jesus and the, the message of the gospel, which is that we have a crucified Messiah who, uh, to, to many, to Greeks and to Jews, it appears foolish, weak, scandalous, obscene, uh, the opposite of power and wisdom. Uh, it seems just scandalous. And for the Jewish people, especially, it felt like that's God's Messiah. You're saying these things about God's Messiah, that he was crucified in shame and died and he was cursed by God. And Paul's argument is, yeah, he he actually was. He had, and that's actually what makes him the Messiah, able to rescue us from the curse of sin, is that he took the curse upon him so that we don't have to. And that being united with him in faith, we actually are united together with him in a new life set free. And all of that then puts us in this community, not just with Jesus himself, but with his people, with other believers. And uh, underneath all of this, he ends by talking about how it means we're people who don't brag or boast. We don't get to kind of brag on our self-importance or how cool we are or all the letters by our name or the degrees you have or the money in your bank account or whatever things that you want to quantify and say, this is why I'm this great of a person. And he says, no, the gospel knocks all that down. And uh, no matter who, who you are, what family you come from, no matter what you have or don't have, uh, none of that actually is what gives you grounds for boasting. We just get to boast in Jesus and what he has done for us. And uh, in other words, it's the idea of humility, that we are people marked by humility and being humbled by the cross. It, uh, it really sets us free from pride and boasting and arrogance. And C.S. Lewis calls pride the great sin. Great, not in like a, wow, this is so great. A great in a, like, this is humongous and it's our biggest problem. Because uh, at the heart of sin, it's always this, decision of the self to say, I'm going to reject God as the authority. I'm going to do what I want for me in whatever kind of way, shape, or form that manifests. It's it's replacing God. It's de-godding God and putting ourselves in that spot. So humility is a reshaping of who we are in light of God. And it's the opposite of pride. It's recognizing who he is and then how we then really relate to him and other people. It changes everything. And one of my favorite quotes from C.S. Lewis about in this chapter on pride about humility, he says, if you meet a humble person, a truly humble person, he's actually not going to be the kind of person sometimes we think of as humble. Uh, someone, he says, who's like a greasy, smarmy kind of person who's always telling you how bad they are and that they're nobody and they're not important. And that kind of self-deprecation actually still can be a way of manifesting pride. If you're always talking about, oh, I'm not that great, and you beat yourself up, and I can fall into that. I know we all can. And uh, it's actually not just kind of being down on yourself. That's not humility. Because uh, actually that still makes you the center of defining who you are and your worth and value. Because uh, our humility in Christ actually lifts us up out of that. So we don't beat ourselves up. We say, oh, I'm forgiven in Jesus and I'm made new. I'm not perfect. I'm a work in progress. But I'm going a day at a time and it's by his grace. And so he goes on and he says, probably if you meet a humble, truly humble person, uh, all you think about them is that they were a cheerful, intelligent per chap who took an interest in who you really were. And he said, you might even dislike that about him because you'll be envious of how much uh, they just seem, this humble person seems to enjoy life and uh, so easily and not get entangled in everything. Uh, the humble person that they just take a, an interest and they're not making it about themselves. And that should really define kind of the people of God. And he goes on, he ends and he says, the truly humble person actually isn't going to be thinking about humility and they're not going to be thinking even about themselves. Uh, not going to be thinking about themselves. This, that's when we get wrapped up in, in pride and it looks different in different ways, but humility just reshapes the social landscape of communities and our faith in Jesus. And I just, I've been reflecting on that's going to be a theme that's going to pop up the rest of Corinthians as he deals with factions and other issues and uh, spiritual gifts and truly loving other people and doing this community thing and dealing with sin. 
all of it is going to be marked by the gospel of Jesus, that we are all saved by grace, and it makes us humble people, and it should knock out some of our boasting and problems, and we should be able to really work towards unity and, and maturity as we kind of respond to really who we are in Jesus and each other in Jesus in this call to follow him. So think about humility uh, as we come to future weeks and just that theme of what does it mean to really be humbled, to not be making about ourselves and not even just beating ourselves up, uh, just resting in the grace that we have from Jesus. So that's just a few thoughts I've had. Uh, I hope they kind of carry with you as you think about diving back into Corinthians and in your own time with the Lord. And uh, as you come back this Sunday, we're actually not jumping into Messy Church. We're doing a little bit of a different Sunday. We do this every year. It's our annual business meeting slash baptism palooza. It's a great Sunday. So you should come. It's going to be a party. Uh, we really have said the business of the church, ultimately, it's to glorify God and to enjoy him and to celebrate, to party, and to live as people humbled by the grace. And then say, all right, let's party. Let's have fun. So the business meeting, uh, we want to really make it about giving God the glory for what he's done this past year, looking ahead at what is coming up, and really trying to seek the Lord on uh, these things as a community and responding to him. And we'll talk about the budget, we'll talk about this next year, and you'll get to vote and to affirm new members and leadership and all of that. So come this Sunday, it's great, it's a lot of fun. After service, we'll have baptism as outside, and it's going to be a party. We'll have a palooza. Don't forget, bring a side, uh, bring some some good food. Well, we, we're providing the chicken, but we're doing a potluck lunch, and we don't want to be short. So if everyone brings a little something, that would be great. Come on Sunday, so hang out for the baptism, and a meal afterwards. It'll be awesome, and we hope to see you there. We love you, Quest. Have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you on Sunday.